Hi, this is Sean. Here's a quick demonstration of what we're going to accomplish in this video. We're going to create an animated 3D widget that opens and closes as we get close to it. And we're going to also turn off the first player gun as we get close to the widget. So let's jump in and get started. So the first thing we're going to do, I've got a fresh level with a first person player. I've created a folder called UI. I'm going to right click and create a blueprint create an actor blueprint, we'll call it BP underscore 3D widget. And we're gonna also right click and go under user interface, widget blueprint, we'll call this a UI 2D. And so let's set up our UI 2D first. Let's go under screen size. We're gonna fill the screen, make that custom. The default is 500 by 500 inside of the 3D widget when we plug that in. So that's what we'll stick with just to keep this fast. We're gonna drop in a button just to test this. And we'll also drop in some text on top of that. Text can say, press me. And we'll just so that we know that the button's working, we'll go unpressed, we'll say, play now, we'll say print, hello. And then, now that we've got that, why don't we do the animation? So I'm going to select the canvas panel. I'm going to go in and click animation. We'll say UI open. And this is going to be a variable. So we're going to need to remember that UI open. So we'll click on a track. We're going to animate the canvas panel. And what are we going to do? We're going to add a transform track. So to the transform track, I'm just going to animate the scale. So I'll just animate the scale of Y. We'll start at pretty small, and then maybe we'll slide to about a half second. And then we'll just make it open. So we'll just click here to add a keyframe. All right, wonderful. So now that we've got that all set up, let's go into our BP 3D widget. Double click, open that up. Now we need to add a widget component. Just a widget component, we'll call it my widget. And we're gonna also add a box collision. And I want that to be parented under. So now we can select the widget component and we can plug in our widget class, which is the UI2D. Great, let's scale up our interaction or collision box because what I'm going to do is I want to make it open up and close as we get close to it. Also, I'm going to set it up so that as I get close to this, it rotates towards me or always faces me. So uh, just to keep this fast, I've pasted the nodes that I have into this Blueprint UE. I'll paste this in the notes on the uh, video so you can quickly do what I'm doing. And we're back. So let's go into the event graph and let's, we just need to delete the event tick, paste that in. And since I've named my widget, my widget, everything works there. If I hit compile. So now I want to set it up so that the box collision, when the pawn bumps into the box collision, so on begin overlap and on end overlap, the box collision, one other important thing that I want you to do is go under the collision and you need to set this to a custom collision otherwise the um, the widget interaction component that we're going to put into the player blueprint is going to fail so i just wanted the box collision to interact only with the pawn so you can just set everything else to ignore that's kind of important so under my widget let's just drag that out and we'll set visible Uh, set visible. There we go. Just copy and paste that. Ooh, oh, copy and paste. Control C, Control V. Great. And we'll plug that in. This we can set down a little bit further, but we want to start out by making it visible. So a new visibility, turn that on. And then from this widget, we're going to say get what are we going to get? We need to get the 
widget class so that we can talk to the animation. So get widget class. Get user widget object. There we go. Excellent. And then from that, we're going to want to play animation. So we're going to play the animation. We also want to, uh, we're going to want to cast to the UI 2D. So we're talking into that. And from inside there, we're going to want to talk to the variable that we created, the UI open. So we'll UI open. We're going to get that. And we're going to plug that in into the animation. Okay, great. So let's copy this. We could probably copy all of this. Paste it down here. And we want to reverse the animation. It's kind of important. Let's plug this all together. You plug that in. We also want to set a delay here. At least of half a second. Otherwise, our animation is not going to, it's not going to look like it's going away. So let's take a look at what we've done here. So when we bump into the collision box, we set the visibility to true. We get the user widget object, cast to 2D, and play the animation. Awesome. Looks like we also kind of need to plug this in to here. Otherwise, we're going to get an, an issue. Let's see. Do we need to plug this in any other places? Yes, probably here also. Let's compile our blueprint to make sure that we don't have any errors so far. Okay, that's looking great. Let's go in quickly to the first person blueprint. So blueprints, first person character. Let's quickly add the widget interaction component. And let's parent that under the first person gun. And let's just nudge that into place. Good enough. And then I like to show debug so we can see the red cursor when we're testing. And then let's go to the event graph and then add. So left mouse button. And then when we press the left mouse button, we're going to get the widget interaction and we're going to press pointer key and release pointer key. Okay, and so press, release, and what are we going to do? Oh, well, left mouse button, and left mouse button. So we have press and release. Um, also, I'm going to make it so that we want to pause the shooting. So we'll just have a no fire zone, right? No fire zone, and we'll just drop that right here. So I'm going to hold down the B key at a branch. We will branch in here, unplug here. And so if no fire zone is true, then, um, or what should we say? If no fire zone is false, then you can fire. So by default, it's false. If we compile it. And then if it's true, don't fire. All right, so let's go in and talk to our uh, 3D widget. So if we go in here, we could cast to the first person player. We could just say uh, first person, cast to the first person character and say uh, set no fire zone, All right? Say that to true. And we could also do the reverse. So set no fire zone. Now we're going to need two of these. Quickly plug this in. OK, so let's quickly Oop, we got a little error throwing in there. What do we need to do? I think we need to probably get the first person or player character, probably. 
Yeah. It's looking for a variable. So now let's try that. Okay, great. So let's drag the 3D widget in. Uh, one thing that I like to do quickly first is the on the widget, I like to set it to uh, two-sided. Let's take a look. So I just set it to visible. And if it's not facing us, like if it's facing the other way, one thing we can do is just, and that's due to, the reason for that is it's due to the this right here. We can go in just to the viewport and we could rotate this. Or we could just, actually we could do it this way too. Just swap these pins. That would fix the problem. All right, let's take a look at it now. Hey, check that out. So, and then as we walk forward, and let's see if we have the animation set correctly. This is pretty much working. So play the animation forward, playback speed, and play the animation in reverse. And let's see, we also want our widget to be hidden when we first walk up to it. So that'd be under rendering, Turn off visibility. Let's quickly go in and hit play. We walk up, it up. We're not rewinding the animation, so let's hold on. Let's just quickly go in and double check. Oh, it looks like we didn't uh, plug this in here, but it works now. Let's try one more time. Walk up and walk back. Wonderful. And we can also click on it. So this is the, and you can also see that it follows us around. Wonderful. That'll wrap things up. Thanks so much for watching.